Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Jim Ward, a PDM Technical Support Specialist. In today's video, I will be showing how to create a dispatch script that will copy the file name to a variable on the file's data card. Dispatch is only available in PDM Professional, so this video will apply to PDM Professional only. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So why would you want a script to copy the file name to the data card anyway? Let's say you've been using PDM for a while and now the situation has changed and you decide that you would like to have the file name linked to a variable on the file's data card. For new files, you can set up the data card to automatically copy that name when the file is created under default values, but that only comes into play when you first create a file. And you've already got a large number of files in the vault that don't have this. You want to use a script or create a script, then that you can select files and run the script, and then that will copy the file's name into the variable on the file's data card. And you can do this in a menu selection. And again, PDM standard does not have dispatch. So this is only for PDM professional. The first step is to create a variable that will contain the file name on the data card. If you like, you can link it to a custom property on the file. In my case, I'm only going to be using this in SOLIDWORKS file name. So these are the extensions that it will apply to, but it's not required to link it to a file property. This is optional. The next step is to add that to a control on your data card. Go to the data cards, find the one that you're currently using. In my case, I have three cards, one for assembly, one for drawing, and one for part. You'll need to add this to each of those data cards. As an example, I'll go to my solid part card. And since I use this card for testing purposes, you'll see that it's not necessarily pretty, but I did put or link this to a file name on my data card. And you can put in a label to that control. You can specify over here on your flags if you want it to be read only. In my case, I'm let it uh, update all configurations. I did leave it as just a text value. In your case, since you want this to automatically populate when you create a new file, you'll want to click on special value and then choose file name without extension. Make sure to check the box default overwrites down here. That way, if you create a new file or if you have an existing file, you do a save as. And when you when you create the file, it will automatically fill in the file name with whatever file name you have specified when you save it. But for existing files, you need to run the dispatch script to update this file name. The next step is to create a dispatch script. To work on dispatch script, you would first add in the dispatch. Let me point out that you can find information about dispatch by going to your help file and administration guide. In the administration guide, I've already got it open here. If you look, you'll see chapter six is all about the dispatch. And as it says again, for Cellex PDM professional only. So this will give you a lot of information about how to set up and use dispatch. Now again, for my example, to actually create a script, you right click dispatch and choose administrate action. If you happen to double click it to open, you can also then in a second one come down here and choose administrate actions. As you see, I do have several dispatch scripts that I have created. One of those is already to set the variable file name. You can double click this or you can choose edit if it's already there. If you don't have one yet, you can just click on add to create a new one. Click on add, you put in a file name, you would select menu command, and we'll go through the rest of this later. So right now we're going to select the set variable and choose edit. So you give it a name. In my case, I wanna activate this by using a menu command. This value you put here is what you will see when you right click a file. So in this case, it is set file name. Then down here are the actual steps that my script will take. We'll go through each of those in a moment. One of the important things that's happening kind of in the background is the variables. Depends where I read in the file name and put it to a variable that I can then write to the data card. And these are these variables that are listed here are only here in the dispatch script. To create a new variable, you just click on add and notice it says new variable you decide what type it's going to be. 
In our case, most of these are going to, just going to be static string because we do have a lot of things that we can do with a static string. Kind of the default is to put in an underscore in front of these and then type in the name of the variable. And the underscore helps to indicate that it is a, a dispatch script variable. Now in our case, I don't need more, so I'm just going to remove that one. This particular script will handle different file name length. To begin with, I need the total length of the file name, and I get that from this variable called total length. Notice it is a static string. What I'm using is a, a dispatch formula to figure out the length of the file. And that formula is called length. To access these, you select this right arrow, the string functions, because it is a string function, and length is here. So I just choose it from here, go through this again, I'll just delete what's here. I select this right arrow. And again, I'm doing this for demonstration. Choose length. And notice it comes in as an ABC. It's telling us what it needs there, length of a string. And so for that string, I select the file variables. I choose name of selected file. So it gives me the length of the file name. The new file name length is the total length which is what I just had, and then I need to subtract seven characters from it. Seven characters, that's the period SLDASM. So the extension is six characters for all SOLIDWORKS files, and the I add in the period so that I don't have the period in the final length. And to do that, then I then come over to here and choose an arithmetic function. Notice I can either add or subtract. In this case, I'm going to subtract. And the longer, when you're doing a subtraction, the longer number goes to the left and then the shorter number goes on the right. To get the file name without extension, I use the two variables. I choose left and then the string that I'm going to be pulling the characters from. And then name length is how many characters to pull. So left will pull the number of characters that I specify here from this string starting on the left hand side of the character string. And so this will give me my name without the extension. So I tell this OK. Now let's go back to our actual steps. Because now I know within the variables what the actual name is without the extension. This for all document starts a loop, finishes with this end for all documents. It's this way you can select multiple documents and handle them all at the same time. Because for each document, it will go through and do everything between these two. This OK message box, this is only here for debugging purposes. If you open that up, all I'm doing is I am giving the full name and then the modified name. While I am developing the script, I want to make sure that I have done everything correctly. And this gives me a message box to tell me what, what I've done. When I'm finished, when I say, OK, great, this is working now, and I don't need this anymore, then I remove it. Now, in order to change a variable on the file's data card, you need to check out the file. To start this script, you'll start it with all files checked in. And the script will check out the file. To add something like this, you click on this, and then come over and choose Add. And then you have a list of choices, things that you can do. And one of them is to check out file. That's actually right here. So you check out file. I'll cancel this because I don't want to add anything right now. So there's check out file. And immediately I can set the card variable. And again, if you click on add, that's one of your choices towards the bottom down here, set card variable. Then once the variable is set, I check in the file. Oh, when you set the card variable, we have to specify the destination card variable. So that would be the one that we defined before called file name. Under the names of configurations, you leave that blank so that it goes into all configurations. And then down here, for what to name it, you go to user defined variables and you see all the ones that you have specified. So I use this one, file name, no extension. And then that places it here. I should show you here on the checkout file. So when I check out the file, notice on, the, on this right click, I'll go down to uh, File Variables, and I choose Path to Selected File. And that's because Dispatch needs to know the exact location of the file that we're going to check out. And so we choose the path. The path does include the file name and extension. Then when we go to check in the file, the same is true. We also go to the path to selected file. And then finally here is end for all documents. If you're doing multiple files, it's really nice to put in a message box 
that pops up when it's done and say file names have been set or say the, the script is, is done so that you know that this, your script is done working. That's it. That's all there is to creating a dispatch script that will copy the file name into a variable on the file's data card. That concludes the video on create dispatch script to copy file name to data card. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. This has been Jim Ward from GoEngineer. Have a great day.